Hey, how are ya? We are back testing the Intel Arc with some retro games today. Now with modern games supporting DirectX 12 and Vulkan, the value is outstanding. Here we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider running at 1080p with the very high details and we're getting over 100 FPS. And same goes for Strange Brigade, ultra details 1080p over 200 FPS. But what about older retro games, DirectX 6, 7 and 8? What about OpenGL? And there are games that received ray tracing patches, for example, Doom, Quake, Quake 2, Portal RTX, and Serious Sam. We will also be testing Endglide. And I found an interesting difference between Windows 10 and Windows 11, so lots to talk about in this video. Let's have a look at the test system used in this video. A big thank you to Devin from Intel. He watched our previous Intel Arc video and he liked it. He made it happen for Intel to organize a Arc A750 to be sent to our channel. So thank you very much. We're using a MSI Z590A Pro mainboard together with an Intel i7-11700F. Arctic sent us a CPU cooler. It is the Freezer 7XCO. Team Group sent us a 32 gigabyte memory kit. It is the Vulcan set running at 3600 megahertz with CL18. Because I'm testing Windows 10 and Windows 11 and found some differences, we're using a two terabyte Team Group SSD for Windows 11. And this one is from Kingston. That one is being used for Windows 10. I installed fresh copies of Windows 10 and Windows 11, installed the latest chipset drivers, then let Windows updates do all the updating. And we're using the latest graphics drivers. These are 3959 from early December. These are the, these new drivers with the DirectX 9 improvements. Let's do some testing. We're starting with OpenGL Classics. Both GL Quake and Quake 2 unfortunately would not run on the Intel Arc. They simply don't launch and both of these games do work on the NVIDIA GeForce. Now Quake 3 on the other hand, this game does run just fine. But here I noticed a big difference using Windows 10 compared to Windows 11. Under Windows 10, the GPU scaling works just fine. The Intel driver has options for integer scaling as well as nearest neighbor scaling. That works perfectly fine under Windows 10, but this is broken under Windows 11. So under Windows 11, the image stretches to the full screen and that just doesn't look good with old games. The next game is Expendable, a direct 3D6 game. Quite old and I love testing this under Windows 98. You can select the resolution. Again, the GPU scaling is broken under Windows 11. It does run fine, but very soon into the game, we can see that some of the textures are just not displaying correctly. Blood 2, direct 3D6. The launcher does open, but when you try to run the game, it just doesn't launch. And again, this is a game that works fine with the NVIDIA GeForce. Tomb Raider 2, I believe this uses DirectX 7. The game launches, however, we cannot select a resolution other than 640 by 480. It's stuck at that resolution. You can't uh, toggle a different resolution for some reason. And again, this is something that works fine on the NVIDIA GeForce. Insane is a cool racing game and this game seems to be working fine. You need to go into the options and uh, set the GPU option to TNL and then it seems to be working just fine. What about Thief 2? This is a game that supports table fog. We don't get any fog and yeah, the game also looks very dark. However, it looks exactly the same on the NVIDIA card. So maybe this is more an issue to do with the operating system or with the DirectX software. Now in the previous video, you mentioned to test DXVA, which is a wrapper that translates between DirectX and Vulkan. And Intel is actually using this technology in some of the games. If you look in the readme file of the latest driver, it has a reference to DXVA. So basically what they're doing is Intel have a couple of uh, options of, 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 of wrappers they're using depending on which game. You can use DXVA yourself by placing certain DLLs into the game folder. So I tried that. And here we have Dead Space running. It's running at 1080p with all the details maxed out. And for some 
strange reason it is now running at locked 60 fps which is awesome remember that space has a bug if you enable vsync inside the game it will run at half the refresh rate which is just not really playable and the intel vsync toggle doesn't seem to work in old games either so that's nice that space running perfectly fine Unfortunately, DXVA is not the magic bullet for every old game and it's not going to fix every issue. I tried it with Crisis and it doesn't even launch the game. I tried the 32-bit and the 64-bit DLL files and just no luck, the game just wouldn't launch. What about Nglide? And I can report that is working just fine. So that means you can use 3DFX Voodoo games using the Glide API. Again, under Windows 10, we get the working GPU scaling, which doesn't work under Windows 11. And I tested games like Unreal and also Rune Gold, and they work perfectly fine. Here we have Serious Sam, the first encounter. You can play this game with OpenGL or the direct 3D render. And I noticed that we're getting FPS drops. Uh, I'll put the footage on the screen and it dips below 60, which is Absolutely mind-boggling for such an old game. Uh, it should not have any performance issues here. This is Mafia and this game seems to be working just fine. I didn't spend too much time testing each individual game, but I couldn't see any graphical errors in this game. Now the Intel Arc has decent ray tracing support, so I was excited. Um, there are many modern games that support ray tracing, but there are also a lot of community patches for Old games, for example, Doom, Quake, Quake 2, Portal RX, and also Serious Sam. So I gave it a test. Unfortunately, the only game I could get going was Quake 2. We have it here on the screen. And at 1080p, the performance is just not enough. It's running at around 40 or something FPS. You have to play at 720p to get 60 FPS locked. The game looks nice, we're getting nice lighting effects, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually not quite sure if I prefer playing it with ray tracing compared to the original render option. And with Doom ray traced, Quake ray traced, uh, Serious Sam, as well as Portal RX, uh, Portal RTX, uh, the games just wouldn't launch at all. So the ray tracing compatibility issue surprised me a little bit. I'm not quite sure who is to blame. Is it Intel and the drivers, or is it the developers only testing on NVIDIA and AMD graphics cards? I'd love to hear your opinion. Um, did you get some of these games with the ray tracing patches working on the Intel Arc? So guys, what is my verdict on the Intel Arc for retro games? Well, compatibility was not as good as what you can get with an NVIDIA GeForce or an AMD Radeon. So, if old games, if retro games are your thing, this is not the video card for you. You're much better off with a GeForce or a Radeon. Just looking at the Intel video driver, there are not nearly as many options as you get with the NVIDIA GeForce or the AMD Radeon. And the GPU scaling not working under Windows 11, that's just a real shame. Having your uh, retro games blown up to the entire screen with the wrong aspect ratio, that should be an easy fix, so hopefully they can address that quickly. I'm also hoping we get more anti-aliasing options. Of course, better compatibility with old games, and I would love to see some sort of super resolution where you can run games at 8K and then downsample it to 4K or uh, 1080p and get a really nice smooth image. So although the recent driver updates have addressed some of the compatibility issues with older games, there's still a lot of work ahead for Intel. So yeah, stay tuned. We will definitely monitor the situation. If you have an Intel Arc and you tested a few old games, please let us know. I tend to test sort of my favorite games because I know what they look like so I can easily spot the differences, but you've got your own favorites. So please share your thoughts down below. If you wanna hear more about Intel graphics cards, I put two videos on the screen for you to consider. One is the Intel Arc, the A770, and the other one is the first Intel graphics card, the i740. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching.